Hey guys. Hey. Welcome to another episode of the How Much Do They Make series. Today we have an awesome guest, actually one of our very own subscribers. Yes. They said that they would love to be on this series and we love to interview everyday people just so that you can see different careers. We've interviewed bankers, doctors, mm -hmm. surgeons, and YouTubers, YouTubers gamers, yeah, and yeah. today we have a physiotherapist. So welcome Obadiah. Hey Obadiah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Humble Penny. So do you want to give us a bit of a background on what you do for a living and how long you've been doing it for? Yeah, so I'm a physiotherapist. Um, I've been doing it for four years. Uh, the first three years I was working in a hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, then the past one year I've been working in the community. So I've been going around people's houses, seeing them in their own house. Um, so that's what I've been doing recently, uh, so for four years. Awesome. So how did you get into doing it? Mm. So tell us about your educational background from your school days. Yeah, and your career journey. And yeah. what you studied. Yes. Uh, so for me, uh, I did my GCSEs uh, in Africa and Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. uh, then I came over here, uh, did my A-levels in the UK. So A-level I did uh, meds, biology, chemistry. Then after that, mm -hmm. I applied. <laughs> Same as yeah. me, that's what I did. My A-levels were mass chemistry, biology. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so after I did that, met uh, chemistry, biology, I actually took a gap year hmm. uh, after that. Uh, and I actually did a volunteering uh, like internship mm -hmm. uh, with a charity organization. Uh, so uh, I was what I was doing through that is I was working mainly with youth, uh, basically doing youth work and sports mm -hmm. coaching. Uh, so I was trained into that. Uh, so it meant that I was more confident uh, interacting with young people, communicating, and all of those skills. Mm -hmm. That gap year as well, I managed uh, to apply for physiotherapy mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the Midlands. Uh, so I got that. Uh, I managed to get in the course. Nice. Uh, which is great. Uh, but also another benefit that happened was because of the volunteering, it meant that I had a part-time job during my university. Wow. I, my three years at university, I had a part-time job uh, doing youth work. Wow. And sports. Uh, in primary schools, okay. uh, so I was getting a bit of money as well during my university days. So I did my university for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, the amazing thing about physiotherapy uh, was in within the course, you also do placements. Mm. Right. Uh, so you do placements within the three years itself mm -hmm. and do placements in different areas as well. So you cover different areas of physiotherapy, uh, which gives you a good grounding uh, when you qualify. Right. Uh, so that's how I got into it. And yeah, then oh. when I qualified. So it yeah. sounds like a very, very, obviously, no pun intended, very hands on job, you know, very, <laughs> very practical. Um, do you want to explain to us what does a day in the life of a physiotherapist look like from when you wake up to like when you go to bed? Like, give us a, a neat summary of what happens. Yes. Uh, so I'll give you like, a day of what I'm currently doing, which is like the community physiotherapist. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the moment, because of COVID and everything that's been happening, most of the things are remote as well. Uh, so that changes things a bit. Uh, so when I wake up, uh, I just start work from home, really, uh, because yeah. we are set up with your laptop and everything that you need. Mm -hmm. I wake up, I look onto my laptop to see which patients or clients I'm seeing that day, mm -hmm. go through them, what to expect and everything. Uh, looking into it a little bit more before I actually go and see them. Mm. Uh, then see or go and see the patients. So usually you've got around four, four to five people that you see per day. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you go and see one person uh, in their own house. You assess them, see what's, what's the problem, give mm. any advice, any set any goals, mm -hmm. give specific exercises, uh, all the equipment that they may need at home as well. Uh, that mm -hmm. can help them. Um, then after you see the person, you do your documentation. So on mm -hmm. the laptop, so you document everything you've done with the person. Mm -hmm. Then you move on to the next person. So you do the same thing for all of the four or five people per day. Right. Uh, so within the actual job box, you see my current job, I see mainly elderly people. So 60 plus. Okay. Plus wow, interesting. And year old. <laughs> so that's always interesting. Uh, so some of the, things are obviously usually let's say someone has a, a person has fallen they fractured their hip they've had right. a surgery 
So you see them in their journey from this. Uh, they might not be able to walk. So that's when I go and see them, try and progress them. Right. Uh, to get as far forward as they can, to get that, yeah, to, right. to get back to their normal. Out of interest, have you seen a higher number of, do you see, have you seen more patients over this pandemic period that people have been working from home or not? I'm just curious as to whether more people have had a need for a physiotherapist because they've been working at home and maybe become less fit and I, I don't know. What, what, what are your thoughts? So yeah, the interest, interesting thing that happened was during COVID, hmm. uh, initially we couldn't see, but there was so much disruption. Sometimes we couldn't see the patients as much in their own homes right. because people were more hesitant. Okay. Um, but what happened was as things progressed, because people were not moving about, exercising, going out as much, Mm-hmm. As the pandemic progressed, mm-hmm. we started seeing more patients uh, later on uh, because obviously they were now, let's say, especially older people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The older person was used to going out every day to walk. So they were more fit at that time. But now because of the pandemic, they were not going out. They become more weaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, then when they try and go out later now, they're now weak. So they might have a fall. There's more chances something uh-huh, happens to them. Right. So we're now having more admissions, more people going into hospitals. Wow. Uh, uh, the pandemic progressed a bit. Yeah. Goodness. And that me. obviously places pressure on the NHS and all yeah. those things. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So what are the top three things or habits would you say that make you a success at being a physiotherapist? Uh, so the first thing for me is communication. I think communication is key. Uh, so the actual verbal communication, because sometimes you have to adapt your, your communication to mm-hmm. certain individuals. They might have different conditions that, uh, that make them, uh, they struggle more to understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it means you might have to simplify your language. Uh, you might you have to alter certain things so they understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You have to have great listening skills so that you are compassionate and empathetic as well towards them. But they'll mm-hmm. be going through a quite difficult time in their life. So you have to be to have that active listening skills, understand mm-hmm. where they're at, so you'll be able to help them as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, written communication also is important uh, because you have to document everything they are doing. Mm-hmm. You have to send letters to the GP, to other professionals as well. Mm-hmm. And so communication in general is really important because you communicate obviously with the client, you communicate uh, with the family as well. Sometimes you have to communicate with the family members. Dang, okay. Uh, then you communicate with the other professionals. So right. communication is the first important one. Mm. Uh, the second thing is, I think for me, was emotional resilience. Right. Um, okay. Yes, because of the job, uh, yeah, the kind of job it is, um, because of people's health, uh, deterioration of health, sometimes sometimes you even experience death as well. One right. of the experience being they might pass away. Uh, right. So you need, really need to have emotional resilience. So for me, I have practical ways that, that I try and help myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, for me personally, because I'm a Christian as well, mm-hmm. prayer is really key for me. Yes. Yes. Uh, so like uh, also reading the Bible is key for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Try and for my emotional state and everything. Mm-hmm. Also, I try and meet up uh, with other guys that I'm in, uh, in the same church with every week. Mm-hmm. So we meet up together. So it's like almost like a community is important. Yes. Meet up together, talk to each other, pray together, share what's going on in our lives. That helps a lot in terms of wow. my emotional state. Week by week, it helps me be more resilient in general. Wow. So that, uh, those are some of the things that have been really helpful for me. Wow. Wow. That sounds like you need some really, some of the most important skills, being mm-hmm. listening. You know, there's mm-hmm. nothing worse than having someone who's trying to help you who yeah. can't listen. Exactly. Right? So it's really... It's really, it's really powerful hearing it from you. Mm-hmm. Um, although I can probably guess the answer to this, but I want to ask you anyway, what would you say you love the most about being a physiotherapist? Um, so yeah, the thing that I love the most is seeing someone, let's say someone, something has happened to them, health-wise, they deteriorated in their health. Maybe they can't walk uh, at that point. They're having to be helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Then I go in, start having exercises, helping them in different ways. Then seeing them take their first few steps is always so precious to me. Like, yeah. And 
they are they are face lighting up like because they might not have walked for maybe a month or something or even more sometimes wow. then they take their first few steps they progress to walking a bit mm-hmm. longer they're able to start doing more things for themselves being more independent they're mm-hmm. able to go out for the first time mm-hmm. so yeah that sounds very rewarding um and you know you did mention you know some of the challenges like some of your clients you know unfortunately you've experienced seen death but what are the other um challenging aspects of your role as a physiotherapist i think obviously other than the death that i've already mentioned Mm -hmm. i think the other thing is uh sometimes you have to actually share some bad news to the client but also to the family so sometimes let's say because of their condition maybe it's a condition whereby it doesn't get better mm-hmm. it gets worse and worse as the years go by mm-hmm. you might have to tell someone that uh unfortunately you might not be able to walk again like wow. so that's such that's always a really that's one of the most painful to be able to share that to the person but also to the family because you have to share mm-hmm. with them. yeah for me i think that's the most difficult that was, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine how you prepare yourself to deliver news like that. Yeah. Like for me, I just, wow, my heart, man. I just like, oh my God, I don't know. How do I tell them? You know, because this is like, this is such a big news. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. So it, it's interesting hearing how involved you are with your role. You're really hands-on and stuff. Let's talk about money on the other end. You know, this is a personal finance channel. People are always very curious about how much people earn for the type of work they do. And obviously a lot of people are actually quite underpaid for the work they do, depending on, you know, what they do. So give us a sense for how much you actually earn as a physiotherapist, say on a monthly or annual basis. Yeah, so uh, when you initially qualify, uh, basically, in, it, I work in the NHS. So we've got different what are called bands. Uh, so when you yeah. qualify, you're in band five. Mm-hmm. So at the moment, band five, the salary range is between twenty five thousand gross per year mm-hmm. to thirty one thousand mm-hmm. gross per year. Mm-hmm. So you start on twenty five, then as you go through the years, you progress to thirty one. Mm-hmm. For me, currently, I'm in the band six, which is between thirty two thousand and thirty nine thousand. Got it. Uh, so 32 and 39,000 gross. Uh, but the key thing to mention is uh, I'm in the Midlands. So Midlands has got a different pay grade to London in right. the NHS. Okay. So in London, you've got a 20% uplift on the salary compared to someone who's in the rest of the country. Got it. Uh, so yeah, so at the moment, I'm in between 32 and 39. So I'm at the lower end of, of the band. Okay. So as I go through the years, I'll progress to 39. Got it. I, I think it usually takes around four to five years to go from the bottom of the band to the top of the band. Right. Um, but within that as well, what I've done, I think a year ago, what I did was uh, I did what's also called locum, uh, or it's called okay. agency. Okay, agency. Uh, agency. So that one also pays quite a lot. Sometimes it's between 25 to 35 pounds per hour. Got it. Uh, so that's that pays more, uh, but it means you've got less security mm-hmm. on, uh, in terms of obviously sick pay and different things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, it was really what happened was uh, before I went into the community, I didn't have any community experience. Yeah. Now, a year ago. So what I did was I did the local agency right. thing, which meant that I, went, I started working in community as a local. Okay. So it meant that I had experience in community now. Yeah. Uh, so recently, I was able to be given a permanent job in the community uh, because yeah. that happened. Yeah. Brilliant. Just to, just to chip in real quick, do you? I know that there are obviously health private companies like Vitality and Booper and companies like that, and they have their own physiotherapists as well. If I if I if I'm thinking about this properly, do those guys earn more than people in the NHS significantly more or not? I mean, in your experience. So in my experience, it's not significantly more right. uh, in terms of people in that yeah, companies like Bupa. It's not, mm-hmm. uh, it's not significantly more. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think obviously the key thing is it's mainly people who go like more private. Uh, yeah. Usually, obviously, you've got more scope uh, to earn more. Uh, if you've got more clients and everything. So Obadiah, do you have any plans of increasing your current income? 
Um, and if so, what do you plan on doing differently? Uh, so at the moment, uh, my aim is to be able to get to the next band. Uh, so at the moment, I'm in band six. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm working to get into band seven. So what I've done is with my supervisor is looking into like skills or experiences or responsibilities that I can take on right now uh, to be able that in a year or two to be able to be able to apply and get into the next band. Uh, but also what I'm doing, I'm actively as well looking for the band seven roles yeah. as well and trying to apply. Uh, then challenge myself and if I right. get an e interview at least I'll test myself uh, because I believe that uh, even like don't be afraid to fail because you always mm -hmm. learn from uh, learning from that experience uh, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm doing at the moment I'm working to get to the next band. Got it. it. So what top three pieces of advice would you give someone who's watching this right now and thinking do you know what I really like the idea of being a physiotherapist I'd like to be where Obadiah is in his career what advice would you give someone in that scenario for me like the best advice is to have initiative in your personal development mm -hmm. uh, to, to have that initiative uh, to look at your weaknesses your strengths and try to develop yourself mm -hmm. uh, to be able to progress uh, whether even is from starting from getting into the university course then the actual course itself, because the course, the physiotherapy course is actually quite challenging. Uh, okay. that's why it's quite challenging. So you actually have to work quite hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing that I would say, have that initiative to personally grow for yourself. Okay. Uh, the second thing is to seek help from others. Okay. Uh, so I can have, I've got that experience even from university in my course. Okay. It was so important. If you just did it for your, everything for yourself, the course would have been super hard. Right. Uh, so what I used to do is uh, look for other people who are like-minded in my course, mm -hmm. uh, then start it together. Because we had used to have like, we used to have like scenarios and different things. So if you right. work together, support each other, brainstorm ideas, uh, you're all learning from each other. You don't have to think everything for yourself. Then you grow from that. Uh, so that was during the university course, seeking help, helping each other. But even after that as well, seeking help from other people who are ahead of you, mm -hmm. uh, further, we are higher up the grade. You want to call yeah, it mentors and mm. stuff, right? And yes. Uh, then let's say if you're doing an application, help them look at the application, give feedback and help you. So I think seeking help as well is a very important aspect in that as well. I think those will be my main things that I would say. Okay. Awesome. So let's shift gears a bit. Um, we wanted to talk more about personal finance. And we want to know from you, Obadiah, what is your personal relationship with money? Yeah, how would you describe it? Yeah. Yeah. I think currently, uh, I would say it's really, really good. Okay. Uh, because the past three years, I think about three years ago, just after I graduated, I came across uh, your channel. Mm -hmm. I came across also, I think, Mama Fafa's channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came across all those channels. Uh, so it got me really interested in the personal finance. Uh, right. So I started following a lot of YouTube personal finance channels. Yeah. I also started reading a lot of books okay. on personal finance, quite a lot, followed mm -hmm. Instagram uh, pages of personal finance. So mm -hmm. it made me really interested in budgeting, investing, nice, all nice. aspects. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I became really passionate and I actually started actually helping other people around me wow nice. wow like that. wow that is awesome so i, I helped my mother i start investing uh more um other than pension i hope yeah. to start investing yeah uh help other people around me as well friends who would mm -hmm. ask me i would help them uh then also i was so interested that i started volunteering with an organization an organization called Christian Against Poverty. Oh, we know them. Yeah, Cap. they're great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm now like a, I'm like a money coach. So we do like, ah. we like courses for free for people. Um, uh, so, so that's another thing because I was so much, uh, yeah, I was so passionate about it and helping wow. others. So I'm now a money coach, volunteer money coach for, uh, for Cap as well. Yeah. Fantastic. That means like for me, just listening to that, like, a big part of what Mary and I have always wanted with what we're doing is we, for us, we've always felt like what we do is definitely a calling. We feel like it's a God led calling. So to hear that, like you've come across our stuff that's had a huge impact on you and had it's had this domino effect where 
-hmm. It's improved your personal finances. It's gone on to improve your mom and your, you know, your friends, people around you, basically. Mm -hmm. To the point where you're now even like volunteering to help other people with their finances is just phenomenal. Literally yeah, it means phenomenal. so much to hear that. Yeah. So that's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. So you're working, you're volunteering. Do you have a side hustle out of interest that generates you an income? And if so, what is it and how does it make money? So at the moment, I can't, I currently don't have a side hustle. Uh, but at the moment, I've been working with my fiance okay. uh, to develop uh, a blog. Uh, it's to do with uh, plants and plant care. Okay. Uh, so we've got an Instagram page. Uh, nice. But now we've just kind of started a blog. So we're kind of working on designing it at the moment. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're looking into. Uh, yeah. In terms of side hustle to develop that even further. And what do you, what's just so we can help to promote you, you and your, um, your partner's business. What's the, what's the blog called and what's the Instagram handle so we can maybe feature that so people can check you guys out. So on Instagram, it's called go bloom grow oh. so is it go or grow go so g-o g-o okay go bloom grow got bloom, it b-l-o-m and grow g-r-o-w got it and is that the same name for your blog as well yes but it's still under development uh, okay. but if you have the same name yeah okay so go bloom grow dot com or dot co dot uk dot com dot com so people you've heard it we've spoken it it's, it's coming into life Definitely. Go, check, go check it out. It out. <laughs> Show some love. So, Obadiah, what do you think you learned about money from your parents growing up? Um, I think the most important thing that I learned uh, was the importance of giving. Wow. Uh, because it's that aspect of it's more blessed to give than to, to receive. Mm. And when you give, I does something to you inside, yeah. in your heart. It changes something in you when you actually give. Um, yeah. So I think that was so important uh, for me seeing uh, my my parents uh, portray that in their own lives, which mm -hmm. meant that when I actually started getting money, no matter how small, I, at least I, I would give a, a portion of it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the most important thing that I learned in terms of finances and money. Powerful. Couldn't agree more about giving. Yeah, um, absolutely. Can you think of, so think back to like, you know, maybe the last 10 to, to 20 years, uh, can you think of any specific money mistakes you've made growing up and what you've learned from those money mistakes? Yeah, I think the most important for me was, so when I started my full-time, obviously my full-time job four years ago, Yeah. Um, I opted out of my pension. Ah. Uh, and my pension for the NHS, the pension is the, a defined benefit scheme. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, as, obviously, as, as, people, as you know, how amazing a defined benefit scheme is. Oh, yeah. That would uh, hurt. That would hurt. <laughs> I can, I we, feel, we feel your pain. Feel your pain, man. I'm just yes. like, oh, group man, hug. that would hurt. Yeah, that <laughs> group, <laughs> like group hug. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I opted out for a few years. Uh, yeah. With, yeah, because obviously, it's almost like that short term, you want that short term yeah. uh, satisfaction of having that money in your bank, yeah. but without knowing the benefits and especially the defined benefit scheme, how amazing it is. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was the, yeah, the mistake mm -hmm. that the most. Wow. Okay. So what do you currently spend most of your money on per month? And also what do you spend your money on to treat yourself? So in terms of what I spend most of my money, at the moment I'm living at home. Okay. Uh, so it's not to do, to do with accommodation or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I spend the most at the moment is I'm actually, uh, me and my fiance are about to buy a house okay. soon. So we're looking to do that. But also we are planning a wedding. Wow. Uh, so everything's going to happen in the next year. So buying a house, and, but also having a wedding in the next year as well. Wow. Uh, <laughs> So that's what we are spending most of our money with everything, solicitors fees, mm. like all those wow. kind of surveys, then obviously yeah. all the wedding expenses. Uh, so we are paying for that bit by bit yeah. as we go along. 
So that's what we are spending. <laughs> what I'm spending as well, most of my money on at the moment. And in terms of fun, um, I spend most of my money on uh, basically going out, having experiences with my fiance, but also with friends. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I, I love having new experiences, uh, okay. tasting, uh, going to new restaurants that I've never been to before, nice, tasting nice. new food, just uh, enjoying activities that I've never done before as well. Uh, so those right. are all the things that I love doing. Uh, so that's what I spend most of my money in terms of treating myself as well. It's funny, I was listening to you, I was thinking to myself, you know, this, at the time we're making this interview, Mary and I, at this time, 11 years ago, we were getting get ready, getting ready to get married. Yeah. This time, 11 years ago. Yeah. Uh, 2011, <clears throat> July, and then we got married in August 2011. So I can definitely feel like where you're at at the moment, like the future looks very, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of good things coming your way and a lot will change in life, you know, for you, like in the next five years, 10 years, which speaks directly into my next question, which is what is your ultimate financial goal? So with your fiance, like, what are you two, like, dreaming dreaming about? What are you two, like, planning? What, when you cast your gaze into the future, what do you want for your life? What do you see ahead of you? My ultimate money goal is, even if it's for one year, to be able to give 50% of my salary. Wow. So that's my ultimate money goal. Like, wow. yeah, because I want to be able to support different causes that I believe mm. in. Uh, different different people and people that need it. Uh, yeah. So that would be my ultimate. Even if it's for one year, that's what I'm aiming for. Fifty percent of my income, wow. able to give it and be generous. Yeah, that is uh, this. I think that must be the first we've had on the, this interview series. I I think so too. But it just you know just goes to show like how impactful and how much of an influence your your parents can be just mm. on how you view money. You know, and and that's that's amazing. It, like mm, you said, that is huge. the first time that, yeah. that we've heard that, so that's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. it's amazing. This we've got a friend, another creator who he measures his level of impact in the world by how much he gives. So every year, he tries to increase his percent his percentage of giving mm. by another a bit more. This is seed time. Mm-hmm. He tries to increase a bit more, and it's very inspiring for us. I follow them as well. You follow them? Ah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that probably helps you having to have like an abundance mindset instead of mm. like a scarcity mindset. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. It's, it's, it's that's huge. Admirable. I mean, I think it says so much about you and what you prioritize. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's epic. By the way, listen, right? Zimbabwe is on our list of places we want to visit. Right, I'm telling you right now. It actually is. It, it is, really is. is. So I saw I saw it on your Instagram. Ah, <laughs> yes. So we're we're um and by the way, guys, if you're watching, obviously head over to Instagram at the Humble Penny. Follow us on there because we share a lot of things in our stories. We try and make the stories just a bit more fun, right? Yeah, a yeah. bit more real life, day to day life. Yeah, day to day. So yeah. definitely make sure you're following us on there at the Humble Penny if you're not. But yeah, no, Zimbabwe is definitely so, you know, we're going to be, you know, hitting you up if, but do you have any ambition? I'm just very curious. I'm always curious of my fellow Africans. Do you have any ambitions of moving back to Zimbabwe or maybe like, what are you and your fiance? Like, what are your plans? Like, obviously you're trying to buy a house. Are you like going to live this hybrid life where you're like, you live in the UK, but you also visit Zimbabwe? Like, what are your plans? How, How do you see that playing out? So my situation is interesting because my fiance is from India. Mm. Yes. So she's from wow. India. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. yeah. So see she at the moment her and her family are in the are based in the UK. Okay. Um yeah, but in terms of our plans, I think the key thing is I uh, would really love for our future in general. Uh, we love looking after potentially in the future even fostering and potentially adopting as well right because uh, right. we are passionate okay. about young people especially the vulnerable young mm-hmm. people uh, so even in the uk that's one thing we are really passionate about wow well that's it's incredible amazing. kind of remind us of a couple your friend well they um I forget her name 
he, he, wife's Indian and he's, he's Nigerian. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have a friend. Yes, yeah, she's Sri Lankan and he's, he's Sri Lankan, Nigerian. Sorry. And they yeah. have six beautiful children and they're not stopping. <laughs> but they, they just have a heart of serving. They just love to serve. And yeah. they are blessed, blessed. beyond mm. measure. As in, yeah. But yeah, I could, I couldn't do six kids, though. That's <laughs> just about getting by with I'm just two. about getting by with two, so. But, you know, each, you know, God gives each person their levels yeah. of strength yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to do this parenting game. Wow. Obadiah, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for, um, you know, coming here on our channel. I'm really just sharing a lot for everyone, including us. We've learned from this experience on what, what life looks like uh, as a physiotherapist. If people wanted to reach out to you to connect and that sort of stuff, how could they do that? Where should they check you out? Uh, so it's mainly on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, so my name Obadiah. Then my surname is Sarupinda. Um, Sarupinda. Okay. Yes. Uh, so that's LinkedIn. Uh, then obviously Instagram. Uh, I've already shared shared Gob yeah. as yeah. well. Uh, so yeah, those are the ways uh, people can reach. Cool. We're gonna put all those details below. Um, if you guys have loved today's video, would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. We make these videos so that you know our audience are much more enriched, not just in their finances, but so they can also have very successful careers and make wise choices about their, their work life. So feel free to check out other videos we've made in this series. How much do they make? We've made ones on you know, whether it's banking or becoming a surgeon or a doctor, as well as non-conventional careers such as becoming a gamer or a YouTuber or a poet. We've done all those interviews, so we'll link to those below as well as a playlist up above for you guys to check out. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And as always, in, in all things, things, be thankful, thankful and, and seek joy. joy. Take care. Much love. Take care. Bye.